Hey everyone, it is Danny and welcome to this update video. And so, uh, today's update video is a little late, but I wasn't really going to be uploading today. But because of something major, I decided that I will be definitely doing today's video. And so, that major thing is our first invest of 2022 in the Atlantic Basin. So, we are 10 days away from the official start of the hurricane season. And so, uh, in this countdown video, we will be taking a look at that invest where it is where it will be headed and the possibility for it to actually develop into a tropical cyclone so before i go into details All right, so first things first, we are taking a look at satellite imagery and we see that we do have some activity off the coast of Africa in that region. And we also have a low pressure system that is out in the Atlantic. And then moving westward towards the Gulf of Mexico, we see some very deep convection. That is where we have our invest. So it's invest 90L and it is located in the Gulf of Mexico. And so it is at uh, highlighted as a disturbance by the National Hurricane Central. So let's go ahead and take a look at their map now. And so here we have it. So it is highlighted in yellow. And if you're not aware, the yellow indicates that the chance is below 40% uh, for tropical development. If it is going to be in orange, the chance is between 40 and 60%. But if it is in red, the chance is greater than 60% for, uh, for us to possibly see some development of that system. And so that thing there, it isn't likely that we will see development as it's going to be heading inland very soon. However, it's might re-emerge into the Atlantic and that is where we could see something maybe try to develop off the southeastern coast of the US and so as of right now we have a low 10% chance of seeing this thing here becoming a tropical cyclone however you might be thinking phew this thing won't be affecting us as a cyclone that is true but that doesn't make it any less dangerous because uh, these showers and thunderstorms especially being so disorganized usually cover a vast area and they they might cause some significant rainfall which could in turn lead to some flash flooding so please if you're to be affected by this thing here uh, along the gulf coast please take all the necessary precautions and stay as safe as possible guys so even though development is not expected while it is in the gulf of mexico at the moment uh as I said earlier, we could see something try to develop as it is going to be emerging into the Atlantic. And so now let's go ahead and take a look at what models are expecting. So we don't have a vast number of available models, but we're working with what we have here. And we see that the majority of, of the available models, at least 90% uh, of them, agree that we will see something uh, trying to develop from this in terms of being a tropical storm. So models are uh, suggesting that we could see this thing here maybe develop into a weak tropical storm when it emerges into the Atlantic. Remember guys, this does not have to take place and whether it develops depends on a lot of factors such as the ocean temperatures, the wind shear, uh, if the environment is high in moisture concentration a lot of those things would really influence this thing here to develop and so let's go ahead and take a look at some of those factors right now so first things first we are talking about ocean temperatures and so as we take a look at the sea surface temperature map we are seeing that uh the gulf of mexico is very warm as i said development is not expected in the gulf of mexico because it's going to be moving inland too imminently for us to see something major some circulation development and all that uh with the system however uh we do have the gulf stream which is a current of warm ocean waters that is being carried from the gulf of mexico over into the atlantic so that thing there is known to few tropical cyclones off the southeastern coast of the U.S. And that is the area we we're expecting that 90L is going to be once it uh, moves out of the state. So if it's going to be lingering there and we have a moist environment, we could definitely see something develop from it. And so temperatures are definitely above average because taking a look at this anomaly map, we're seeing that the Gulf of Mexico definitely has above average temperatures indicated by those oranges and reds you're seeing. So whenever you see a very pale yellow going to oranges and reds, that indicates that the 
the sea surface temperature is above normal, whereas if you're seeing white, it indicates that things are pretty normal. However, if you're seeing blues, that indicates that temperatures are below normal. So we're seeing that off the southeastern coast of the U.S., things are above normal in terms of temperature. The Caribbean, most sections of the Caribbean, below normal temperatures, but that doesn't mean it's not uh, conducive to enable tropical cyclone development because once we have temperatures of at least about 26 degrees Celsius, we can definitely have development of tropical cyclones taking place. And next, we are taking a look at that dry air. So we have a lot of dry air across the Atlantic region right now, but we're seeing that for sections of the Gulf of Mexico and off the southeastern coast of the U.S., we don't have a whole lot of presence. So if things remain that way, uh, that means that we could definitely see something uh, try to develop from or invest. So, so far, two factors that could be favorable to enable some cyclogenesis of the system. And in terms of the Caribbean, we do have that mass of Saharan dust that's making its way by, and we're expecting that the amount or the concentration will gradually decrease as we head further into this week. All right, guys, and so next we are taking a look at the shear forecast. We'll be taking a look at what the GFS and Euro models are expecting. So first up, we have the GFS. And so this is Tuesday, the 24th of May, and we are seeing that right in that region of the US we have some conducive shear so when the colors go from the light blue to the darker blue to the greens yellows oranges reds that is when we have increase in shear so the more we're in that region where it's mainly the blues or the very dark green that is when things are somewhat conducive to enable some uh, cyclogenesis to occur and so as we head to Wednesday on the 25th of May though we see where things get maybe a little bit more hostile based on what the GFS is showing here and then go into euro around that same time wednesday on the 25th we see that euro is showing that we will have some favorable shear within that region and so once this as i said once that shear is conducive once we have a moist environment and then warm sea surface temperatures we definitely have favorable conditions that could enable some intensification of that low once it makes its way back out into the atlantic and i want to point out something else to you guys so the euro model is picking up on maybe a low pressure system right uh, off the coast of I would say Virginia, North Carolina thereabout. There we have it. So maybe we could definitely see something come from this guys but as I said regardless of development this is going to be producing a lot of showers and thunderstorms along portions of the Gulf Coast of the US and so guys please take all the necessary precautions and stay safe and please do not take any unnecessary risks and so as time goes by I will definitely be keeping you updated on the tropics as time goes by and so if you found this video to be quite informative please give a thumbs up and you can also share your thoughts with me in the comments or ask a question i will try to respond as best and as soon as i can and so remember to always be weatherwise